Hi, everyone. It is February 21, 2020. I want to thank everybody for responding to the video that I posted last night. Wow, there's a lot of you who are not feeling very good. A lot of you who have known people who have had strokes, who've had heart attacks and died. And I'm going to be posting more videos um, regarding these frequencies and life, just life, what life has become for us. But, you know, I've been uh, trying to post videos on the flood. I'm overwhelmed. I am overwhelmed with the destruction that is taking place. And, well, with everything that is taking place, um, things are happening really fast. But just in regards to our weather being used as a weapon, wow, well, a lot are going down. So, let me, and I, you know, wow, I've got so much bookmarked, guys, and I don't even know where to start. So, I'm just going to start here. The flood season of 2020 started early in the south. Heavy rain in Tennessee turned fields into lakes. Transportation officials closed roads as water moved up in the flood-ravaged region. The heaviest rain extended from Louisiana through Mississippi to Georgia. Residents around Mississippi's capital of Jackson were sent from their homes and told not to return until given the all clear. This neighborhood is near the Pearl River and a reservoir held and allowed for a slower release of upstream water coming towards Jackson. Some residents had to paddle into their homes to check on belongings and conduct property checks. Winter spread to the southeast this week as snow fell in North Carolina and Virginia, areas that rarely see conditions like this. Here in Raleigh, the capital is forecast for only an inch, but other locations in the northeastern portion of the state could be in line for six inches and white out conditions. From Market to Market, I'm Peter Tubbs. Well, are, is it snowing today in North Carolina? It's clear here, nothing in the sky. We actually have sun. And this was posted on the 21st. Well, let me know, guys. Are you having snow in South Carolina? Because I don't think you are. Oh, wow. Look at this. Look at this lovely atmosphere of ours loaded with nanobots. Yes, nanotechnology is controlling our weather. Yes. All these little dots. All these little nanobots. Uh, you know, I, I wonder if they have lost control of these nanobots that can self-replicate. That has been the warning from nanotechnology experts. We don't want to release this because they can self-replicate. It's kind of like creating life. It's like a life form. They self-replicate and they take over. Well, our atmosphere is loaded with these nanobots now. But as you can see, the air masses are moving in different directions here, uh, which should tell anybody in their right mind something's wrong. How about just something's wrong? You don't need to know the details. You just have to go, okay, this, this weather, something is wrong with it. And then, well, Perhaps do some research. Now, listen to those quote-unquote conspiracy theorists in your community. Listen to them. Because they're not conspiracy theorists. Uh, they happen to do some research. They get the facts. They get the documents. They get the evidence of that you know, something wrong, trying to find, well, what is wrong, then they find that weather is being controlled and used as a weapon. Perhaps you would like to listen to them because they're right. They're right. And I've done an awful lot of research myself, and I've posted an awful lot of videos, so don't leave that 
it's oh god please yeah you know, it's amazing how people you know feel perfectly fine with revealing publicly their ignorance you know they're proud to be ignorant they're proud to be stupid they're proud to be immature you know just calling people stupid crazy oh you haven't taken your meds yet uh what you know do we have mature people in this in this uh world of ours anymore you know it does seem like the majority are just well caving regressing you know back into junior high school but when you see our quote unquote national leaders acting the same way well you know that something's wrong so here we have it coming in gulf of mexico or you know off the coast sorry of mexico through mexico yeah now it's going into arizona but uh, they're gonna bring it back down because guess what guys we're having more rain three days of it three days of rain for yeah this whole area and it's brought to you by man, not Mother Nature. It is not God. You know, stop thanking God because you're okay. God seems to be selective, I guess, and picks out who he's going to save and who he's not. Well, uh, that's a belief system based on one's delusion. Oh, I know. I'm going to get hammered for that, right? All right. So, um, we have a problem. We have a big problem. They're not letting up. They're increasing. They are increasing the amount of destruction they're bringing on. People, most people can't recover from this. A whole lot of people are going homeless. Look at this straight-edged manufactured cloud right here um, yeah, we have these nanobots that just decide to go and off on their own so all right well let's get back to the flooding but do you see do you see what's happening with our atmosphere do you see the nice lines down here with a grid pattern really you think that's mother nature well if you do i feel sorry for you but they're going the air masses are traveling in different directions here we have you know the, the air mass coming down south but oh actually it's being pushed up north as well uh we've got this air mass that is going out to the west and we have this one going up north in a northeasterly direction and we've got oh, air masses coming down south southwesterly but here northeasterly and we've got this going well it's kind of turning right kind of back around maybe they're going to create a bomb cyclone for southern california uh, and we have so many people who are just believing the horse shit that they are being told on mainstream media. Isn't it great? Isn't that just lovely? Look at this. And once again, you see that they, <laughs> I mean, look at this. It looks like rags just being tied together or something. Tattered pieces of cloth and here are your nanobot lines nanobots throughout this entire thing well I for one don't like it <laughs> I for one you know uh, I didn't give my consent for man to put mother nature into retirement and take over and play God and bring about a lot of destruction. I never gave my consent. 
uh, but who are you, Carol? You're just a useless eater. You're just cattle to these people who have an awful lot of wealth and power and can control the planet. I don't have a psyche that works like that. I don't see anybody as being better than anyone else. I don't give a shit if they're sitting in the White House, you know, with that little placard that says President of the United States. I don't care if they're in Congress. You know, look at what we have now. We've got the worst of the worst. And we call them our leaders who are destroying us, literally destroying us. Now, it's not just happening in the United States. It's happening all over the world. Um, and why are we losing this battle? Because we have way too many of our fellow human beings in our respective countries who don't give a shit about anything or, you know, are proud to be lazy and ignorant and just, you know, parrot back what they hear from mainstream media. That's why we're losing. We're not losing because these evil, you know, elite, subhuman whatever the hell they are. We're losing because of all of those people around us who just, I don't know, I guess they, they maybe subconsciously feel that they're cattle, uh, that they're useless eaters, and, well, that's how they behave. So, you know, the amount of destruction... Just this past week has been enormous. Well, we have seen flooding on both sides of Mobile Bay for two days now, and the water's still expected to rise. News 5's Dana Winter joins us live in Saraland tonight, taking a look at the current conditions there. Dana? Peter, people who live on this road say water steadily creeping up to their homes. Take a look behind me right now. If you can see, there's still some water waking. We just had a truck drive back to uh, people going back to their house tonight here on Bayou Avenue, where we're at. You see water running across the road and into people's front yards. This aerial video is given to News 5 by our viewer, Chris Jesse. He says it was taken today in the same area near where we're at right now along Bayou Avenue and also on Dale Street. In in the video, you see homes with material in front of the doors blocking water from getting in and trucks plowing through, making waves. And check out this video here. This just happened a little while ago in front of where we're standing right now. One man taking out his boat to try to get around. He tells us the water is up to his house and he's not seen it this high since Hurricane Katrina. We'll keep an eye on those rising water levels you see here. That's a pretty large truck attempting to make its way out of the flooded area. And those people live right next to that mailbox you just saw make sure you've got our news 5 app downloaded so you make sure you got that app downloaded so they can tell you you know oh a tornado or flash flash flooding or the river is rising get out now you know <sighs> major flooding expected for several gulf coast rivers this is alabama <sighs> more rain coming more rain coming. Interesting how the rain stops, but the flooding continues. Same thing happening in the UK. This is Alabama as well. Flooding woes continue in Greene County, and now some people are asking the county for help. Good evening, I'm Sherry Jackson. I'm Jack Royer. Those people want the roads fixed after flooding has damaged it, turning into deep mud. Tim Reed is in Utah tonight. Residents living on Flag Road are really frustrated. The only way to get in or out is by driving four-wheel drive trucks or ATVs. Most of the road got washed away, and the only thing left behind is lots of mud. Life in Utah has become a muddy mess for Stephanie Poole and her son Nathan. Heavy rainfall from last week and flooding from the Black Warrior River has turned their road into a disaster. A number of families have spent lots of money and are using their own tractors trying to fix this road. They also want help repairing their bridge. I don't think it's fair that our men have to get out there with their own equipment, their own money, their own time 
to repair a road that Greene County is supposed to fix. Some of the areas that are real soft, we may use our bulldozer and kind of remove some of the bad material and push it to the side. That way they can drive on something harder. we got to get something done with this because everybody's getting tired of being stranded and spending all their money out of pocket. Residents tell Don't you think they're right? What's going on? What's going on is that your local, your local quote-unquote leaders are not representing you. They are representing the United Nations, bringing in global governance, and that'll be a video that I hope to post later on. This is now a time where, yeah, you got to go out. You got to fix the roads. You've got to fix the sewers. You've got to do everything because no one else is going to do it. They're destroying this country. Oh boy. I wish people would get it. This is in Choctaw, Choctaw County, Choctaw County. Rescue. This is a truck right here, a man being rescued. You know there's always a chance your community could get flooded. Now today I spoke to a homeowner who says she's hoping this rain will stop so things will get back to normal. But the rain ain't stopping. You're getting more of it. This past week has been an adventure for residents living in the Two Rivers neighborhood. 91 homes are surrounded by floodwaters from the Tom Bigby River. Krista Johnson and her husband are frustrated. This same time one year ago, their house got flooded and so did their shop across the street. And it's happened again, causing more water damage inside their house. Full of mud water all the way around. We're going to have to take out the sides again and redo the bathrooms, floors. Um, we just got it all finished probably about two months ago in the house. And then um, his shop, we were probably about 70% on it. And so it's just to start over again. And with more rainfall means the river is rising again. And the only way in or out is by boat or four wheelers. Very frustrating. A uh, lot of hard work. A lot of, lot of people. There's 91 houses in here and we haven't there's not been one emergency service in here to even check on anybody. Johnson has been trying to clean up, but says this is going to be difficult. I love everybody down here, and I think if it wasn't for them, it would be a lot harder. And so we're, we're just, we're pulling together. We're going to get it together. We'll get it cleaned up. Johnson tells me when the flooding happened last week, more than five feet of water got into her house. But the good news is she, like many other residents who live here, have flood insurance. In Greene County, Tim Reed, CBS 42 News, local coverage. You can All right, you have flood insurance now, but you're now looking at repeated flooding. That has happened to you. Your flood insurance will be taken away. To the severe weather at this hour, that major winter storm bringing snow, freezing rain, flooding, and a tornado watch in Louisiana for much of the day. That winter storm stretching from Texas to Maine, dangerous flooding in Dallas tonight. A woman rescued from her car in rushing waters and treacherous ice flipping a big rig on its side on Highway 81 near Decatur, Texas. ABC's Marcus Moore from the storm zone tonight. Tonight, that massive storm cutting across the country, bringing a wintry blast to western parts of North Texas, covering roads with dangerous ice. And to the east in Dallas, a deluge of flooding rain, leading to water rescues, even first responders needing help. And overnight, there, the rescue underway now. A woman rescued from the roof of a car, and a terrifying moment for Lacey Smith and his family. Lightning striking their car, sending his hood flying. Evacuations in Indiana and southwest of Chicago, as rivers there continue to rise. And tonight, you can see how much the Trinity River has come up here in Dallas. And this is far from over, David. The rain continues to fall. And in the coming days, another half a foot is expected from Texas and across the Heartland, David. That's right. Across the Heartland. Now, these guys, they don't do their job. They're unbelievably irresponsible and dangerous because they're not doing their job. These are not investigative reporters. 
Not this guy, not the other guy, not any of them that you see because they do not do what they're supposed to be doing. Investigating. Looking into that nanotechnology. The nanobots that are controlling our weather. They don't look into what the military is doing. They do not look into the fact that weather is controlled, being used as a weapon. How many times, just in the past couple of weeks, have we had severe weather coming at us and it just keeps going? I didn't even know about Dallas. I didn't know about Dallas. I just came across this video. Didn't know. Oh, wow. Major flooding in East Dallas, but then you had snow and ice in another part of Dallas. Um, and people aren't questioning this. My God. That's why we're in trouble. Peru, again, gets hit again. Again, Peru. Five dead. Flooding, landslides, plague. Southern Peru. Well, guess what? Peru, didn't you have flooding about a week ago? Well, you got it again. Ooh. And this happening all over the world. All the cars just floating away all over the world. What's going on? Massive, massive, massive rainfalls. And you're going to believe that lie. It's climate change. Are you kidding me when there is so much evidence out there that it, they're lying? Lying. They're lying. They are bringing on this destruction purposefully to reshape that world. You know, it's got to be sustainable, this world. It's a United Nations plan. Agenda 2030 is very real. You know, what, what really is bizarre is that we have, we have got the United Nations. There's news out there that says, well, actually, they just praised President Xi, China, because China is fully committed to Agenda 2030. Look at United Nations news. So when you say Agenda 2030 to people, they think that you're just a conspiracy theorist. Are you kidding me? Well, people have to snap out of this immaturity that they've got going. I don't know what the hell it is. But Peru. Peru. Again. Again. Hit hard. How do people recover from this? The repeated hits. How do people recover? And you got this guy. Yeah, coming to visit you in Wales. The flooding that occurred. Oh, and is still occurring. Yeah, the rain stopped, but you still have flooding. Oh, and then you've got Storm Ellen coming. This trash, this subhuman actually gets people to like bow down to him, to respect him. So he just walks around, oh, and yeah, he uh, touches little children and he smiles and he talks to people. This family, the royal family has enough money to literally make whole 
everybody who has been destroyed from fires and floods. This guy, did he donate even a dime? Is he helping these people? Or is he just doing that, oh, well, oh, to his mother. I'm so, I don't want to have to do it to have to shake the hands of ordinary people, but I'll do it because you ordered me to and I've got to listen to the queen. So I'll go and it'll be filmed and people will just want to reach out and touch me because I'm the Royal Highness. Give it up. Give it up. These people are so unbelievably low that they're just, they're, you've got the worst of the worst all over the world. We all do. The worst of the worst that are put up on pedestals by people. It's disgusting. Disgusting that this guy can come around, look at all of the suffering that these floods that have been used as a weapon against these people, and he just shakes their hands and smiles. Oh, thank you, Prince, for coming to see us. Uh, but how about, you know, it, 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 how about helping us? How about rolling up your sleeves and helping us clean up after this flood? Oh, well, I'm your royal highness. I certainly couldn't do that. Disgusting, despicable. And I'm so sick of people who bow down to these people. It's disgusting. It's just disgusting. Yorkshire Dales, hit by flooding, following heavy rain. Once again, people have had to rescue, be rescued from their homes. Flooding, heavy overnight rain. And you still don't even have Storm Ellen yet, yet. Okay, spring flooding could be a major problem in the Missouri and Mississippi River Valleys. Get ready, guys. Get ready for the massive flooding that's coming throughout that heartland, throughout, you know, all of the farming areas. Because, well, you guys, that farm, you got to be destroyed completely, completely. And what is really pretty shocking Farmers, don't you look up at the sky? You know, can't you read the signs of what kind of weather you, you... That's how you used to farm, right? What are you looking at now? What the hell are you looking at now? You're looking at an artificial sky. You don't see all of those contrails that hang about, spread out. You don't see what's happening in your sky. You don't recognize the difference. Horny County, Horry County, California, um, God, South Carolina. We've got to start being more proactive rather than reactive on it. Horry County. Property and homes. And despite the dry weather today, many roads in Horry County are still closed because of that flooding. Take a look at your screen right now. This is Horry County's website listing road closures for you, many of which are actually blocked because of the standing water. The WMBF News reporter Catherine Phillips is live on Roberta Lane, one of those flooded roads. And Catherine, you spoke with a member of Horry County Council today about how they continue to learn from these situations. Tell us. They continue to learn from these situations. Wow. What are they learning? What are they learning? They're learning that more and more people are getting destroyed. Horry County is one of those counties that, yeah, the FEMA buyout is coming for you to buy out your homes because you can't sell them. You can't, you're not gonna be able to sell a home if it's close to a river, a stream, a creek. Well, if you're on the coast already for the uh, recent years, Homes have depreciated where there's a water body. Yes, Roberta Lane here is just off of Forest Book Road, and it's one of the many roads that are flooded here in Horry County. And Horry County Council member Johnny Vaughn says that county leaders need to take action and learn about how to prevent the, what's causing these homeowners so much, so many headaches. Oh, please. 
water just never goes away anymore. Oh, it's because we've had so much rain and the rivers are so high and the stre streams and the creeks. Carol, you're just not understanding. No, what I am saying is something else is happening and it's not Mother Nature. Could they be closing off the drains to let that water sit there? Because you are being forced, forced into believing in climate change. You're forced into it. That's what they're doing also. Forcing people to believe that this is all climate change. Jackson, Mississippi. Case of what people in the Jackson area are dealing with. Homes like this, entire yards are inundated with water, forcing many people out. Some of them have nowhere to go. Tonight, the mighty Pearl River has taken on all that it can hold, turning streets into rivers, homeowners wading through the rising waters. For some, the only way out is by boat. After everything we've been through, I'm like, this is the blessing for me now. But now it's gone. <laughs> Rochelle Watson just moved here seven days ago after losing her home to a fire in Oklahoma. She thought she'd found the perfect home in Jackson, only for Mother Nature to take it all away. It's like, what do I do now? I own an uh, 08 Volvo XC90, and I have four children, and I've been a single mother for 12 years almost. And this is like my last stop. You know, is to come, get a house, move in, uh, be able to rebuild my home, uh, repair my life. Now she's homeless again. The shelter, her home, away from home. I would not wish it on anybody, to be honest. It's not about the shelter itself. It's about being a single mother in a shelter with kids. But she's clinging to her faith. She says this storm is just another test, and she's confident the sun will soon shine again. I like Oh, what I can do is just keep prayer and know that after this storm, literally, that there's going to be a rainbow on the other side. Well, I'm sorry. There's not going to be another rainbow. If people knew what was happening in this country, they might band together with others and fight the evil that is taking them out. And there's an awful lot of people who have been rendered homeless just this week. Just like the homeless from the flooding and the homeless from the fires. And it's just going to continue until people face the reality of what is taking place. Again, another woman. Homeless. In Jackson, weeks of heavy rain sweeping through the state, leaving hundreds without a home. Twin States News' Jacqueline Coleman spoke to flood victims who are seeking refuge at the American Red Cross. Flooding slams Mississippi as water continues to rise, and from the looks of things, it isn't over just yet. Murky brown waters began creeping to new levels, swallowing homes in its path late last week. And Governor Tate Reeves says it's expected to affect nearly 2,500 structures, including 1,000 homes. Saturday, Reeves declared a state of emergency, urging people to get out while they can. The water is... Yeah, the water. Flooded homes. Bill mothers are seeking refuge from the American Red Cross in Jackson. We got flooded out a couple of weeks ago, actually up in Camelot. And uh, we have been, I mean, like, I guess searching for a place to stay ever since, kind of. Deanna Bradley and her children left her cozy home and came to Jackson Police Academy for shelter after losing everything. It has been very difficult, especially with having three small kids in a shelter, like, you know, with sleeping on cot and stuff, not having nowhere to sleep because of the water, the rain outside at home. And yeah, we're just trying to make do. The situation is especially hard since Bradley doesn't have insurance to cover it. But during this. Yep. Well, how about Maine and, oh, uh, Tennessee, Michigan? Yeah. 
The team is tracking a massive storm system, blowing snow and creating miserable conditions in Michigan. In Maine, snow caused this crash involving multiple tractor trailers on I-95. But snow isn't the only threat from this storm. In Tennessee, the relentless rain washed out this road, and the concern in the south is that the system will cause even more flooding. At least two states have declared states of emergency. Our Rob Marciano is tracking it all. I don't think I can listen to Rob Marciano. Lengthy dry spell raises concerns about possible drought. Where? California. California. Drought. Again. And then, listening to this. The Bible is full of stories of people who've experienced sudden loss, great loss, whether it's personal or financial or circumstantial. I think of Joseph who out of nowhere finds himself thrown in a pit and turned into a slave overnight from his pinnacle position with his father. I think of the disciples on the water. When a storm, a lilac, comes out of nowhere and disrupts their sense of peace and well-being. Life can get stormy sometimes. Okay, I can't. Listen, the whole thing is about prayer. And in these hard times, God will just shine throughout you. God will be inside you and carry you, I guess, to a better place. Well, guess what? God works through us, and everybody should be helping everyone. No one talks about helping. No one talks about getting in there and helping people. And Christians, considering, considering that you call yourself Christians, where's the help? What's going on? We're not going to make it. We will not make it unless we change who we are and begin to really help those in our community that need the help. And if no one needs any help in your community, that you extend yourself outwards, branch out, because there's an awful lot of Christians who are needing help. There's a lot of people who are homeless because of this weather being used as a weapon. We've got to change. We have to. We have to help everyone who needs it. Oh. Yeah.